Hello everyone. To tell you the truth, it took me a long time to decide whether to tell you my story or not. You can see for yourselves that my face is unusual. It's like a sieve, all in holes. No, nothing terrible happened to me. I was born like this. Ask me how it happened? I'll tell you, but in the meantime, listen, watch, and give me likes to support. This is a big step forward for me. My name is Lena Edison, and I was born 13 years ago in the most ordinary hospital in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My parents are farmers, and they are hard workers. My mom couldn't get pregnant for a long time. She had treatments, but it often didn't work because they were so busy all the time. So it took about 10 years, and my mom eventually got pregnant at 38. This age is considered undesirable for the first birth. But what can you do? The pregnancy went well. But at the time of delivery, when I already saw the white light, the doctors gasped and my mother fainted. I, like all babies, cried and screamed. A baby's first cry is the norm. But my cry was different. It came not only out of my mouth, but all through my face, through the holes. A concilium was assembled. The doctors ran a bunch of tests. My dad was running around, confused. My mom was crying all the time, looking for the cause in herself. But everything was clear. That is, she and I were healthy by all indications. Apparently, that's just her biology, the doctors would say and throw up their hands. In time, my parents got used to it. And then I grew up. And every time I cried or screamed, tears either flowed out of the holes or a screaming voice came out. But I thought I was normal. Until I ran into other children. I remember how at playgrounds, when parents saw me, they would pull their children away as if I were contagious. For this reason, I closed myself off. I had no friends. Every time they tried to get me into a new school, my mother fought for my rights and shoved my health certificate in their faces. It was a nightmare. I've told you for the hundredth time that my child is healthy. We all understand, but you also understand what other parents will say. How could we allow such a child to study and have contact with normal children? Normal? So you want to say that my child is abnormal? I'll sue you for saying that. My child has the right to education just like everyone else. No, that's not what we meant. You're twisting my words. Twisting? You insulted my child. Guards, take her out. Usually, the guards would take my mom out, and I would walk sadly in the back, and my dad would take us right out of there. And so it went all the time, disappointment after disappointment. And what about my parents? They loved me no matter what, telling me I was the best and that I was worthy of love. It's a shame there were so many angry words in my surroundings, and more often, the opinion of the majority, for some reason, came into my head more than the words of those who loved me. School after school, I changed them like gloves. Mass complaints from parents pressured me, and I couldn't stand it. So I'd ask to be transferred. And so, when I was once again switching schools, strangely enough, on the first day, I was approached by a boy, my classmate, George. He introduced himself and sat down next to me quite calmly. I was very surprised. I thought there was something wrong with him, since he did not behave like everyone else. You see, it was no longer normal for me that someone could just sit next to me instead of avoiding me as usual. Are you blind or something? No. Poor eyesight? No. Why did you sit next to me? Aren't you afraid, like everyone else? What's there to be afraid of? My face? A face is a face. As if anyone here is perfect. Everyone thinks I'm contagious. I'm sorry they think that, but I don't agree with them. He was the only person in my life who didn't shrug and wanted to be friends. My parents were happy to see him. They thought it was a good sign. The guys made fun of him, laughed at both of us, called us a couple of names. I was embarrassed. I told him a hundred times that if he wasn't comfortable, he could not communicate and I would understand. But George stood his ground asked me not to bring it up again. So our friendship only grew stronger. Six months later, everyone at school was getting ready for the fall Classmate of the Year contest. There, you had to show off your talents and send in an essay about the person you thought was the best. I wrote one about George and sent it in the box. When I stepped away from it, my classmate Bart got to me. 
What? Who did you write about? Your boyfriend? Ha! <laughs> the bride and groom. What do you want? What do you care? You don't belong here. Get the hell out of the school. Leave her alone. What did you say? Get off her. What's wrong? You're wrong. That's what. And George punched him in the face. He freaked out, and then he jumped on George. I cried in fright, and my whole face was wet with tears. The principal came running in and broke the guys up, but the conflict didn't end there. Bart fished George out after school when I was already at home and gave him a good beating. I didn't find out about it until the next day and came home upset. I asked my mom for a favor. Mom, transfer me to another school. What? But why? You're so happy there, and you have a friend. He just suffers because of me. I don't want to ruin anyone's life. I've already ruined yours. I cried again. My mother tried to calm me down, but it didn't work. I flatly refused to go to school, and my parents took away my documents. While we couldn't find a place to transfer to, I stayed home and didn't answer George's calls or messages. I figured he was better off without me. A week later, I was accepted in a new boarding school. It was far away, and I had to live there for five days and only come home on weekends. It was hard, but the children there were all different in some way. Disabled with diagnoses, in general, we were all locked into the same school and not allowed out, like prisoners. It felt as if I were working off the crime of being born into the world. The atmosphere there was just as harsh. The teachers and nannies treated us like animals. A strict regimen, uniforms, the same menu for every day, and there was punishment for the slightest misbehavior. I put up with it. I didn't tell my parents because one more transfer would have just finished them off. But life got worse. The guys there turned out to be even more cruel. They poked me in the face with a fork, tried to pull the noodles out through the holes, brought me to tears to see how the liquid flowed out of my face, and they laughed. And then I had a visitor. It turned out to be George. We hugged for about five minutes without a word. And then he silently grabbed my hand and took me home. You're not going back there. But I have to. I know why you went there. You're my friend and you're not going to study in a place like that. I'm not accepted at your school. You're in trouble because of me. I'm in trouble because of Bart. What's that got to do with you? You're my friend and I won't let you go back there. He brought me home to my surprised folks and told me he'd come by my house tomorrow to pick me up for school. So he did. From the doorstep of the school, Bart roared at us, but George clenched his fists and he shut up. And then he stood in the middle of the hallway and yelled, Come on, who else has the guts to say something about her? You can humiliate me, but not her. Did you even know that Lena is an excellent writer? She'll beat you all in literature. She's great at math, she's a fast reader, and she's way more illiterate than any of you. Especially you, Bart. You're not smart at all. Have you ever stopped to think that every joke you make could change and ruin a life? No, that's not the answer I was looking for. And you know what? If I had to choose between you and my classmates and Lena, I'd choose her. Because she's better than all of you. His words moved me. Everyone was silent, and then the bell rang. Everyone was invited to the assembly hall for the contest. The judges from the teachers selected the best essays, and then they said they would conduct a method of voting for the best student. Among the chosen work was mine. The principal praised the writing, and then said that now the kids were going to choose the best one. Everyone threw their papers into the box and waited. George and I were chatting about our own stuff. Then suddenly, my name was called. Lena Edison, on stage. I was shocked when I heard it. I couldn't even believe it right away. Bart sat there disgruntled, and I got up there and didn't know what to say. We solemnly award you the title of Student of the Year. Do you know why? It's not just because of your grades. The students wrote notes of explanation. They recognized you as special and said they were honored to study with you, because not only do you have a bright mind, but also a good heart. I didn't expect. Yes! Bravo! Bravo! That's my friend! George jumped up from his seat and started yelling like a lunatic. The audience applauded, 
Well, everyone except for Bart. They gave me a trophy and a certificate. And you know, it was the happiest moment of my life. Then George told me that in order to be the best, you just have to remind everyone that you already are. Tell me guys, did you like my story? Write your opinion about it in the comments below the video. Don't forget to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel.